This is Lemons Car Spotting. You post to Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We pick the hooptiest. They are so incredibly terrible. And which one we want to become a real Lemons build. It does car-like things. I've been pushing for one of those in Lemons too, and those are very affordable. Hey everybody, it's Jay and Nick, and this is Lemons Car Spotting. All right, how does this work? You go to Instagram when you're walking around outdoors, you see a terrible car on the street, as we all do. You take it, you hashtag Lemons Car Spotting, put it on Instagram, we'll, f yeah, right there, we'll find it, uh, and then we'll talk about it, and we award two different awards every time. That's right, we have the Hooptiest, and we have the Lemons Build, which is the car that we want to see become a real Lemons Race build, and one of us will pick one award each, and I will be choosing for Mr. J. Here's how that works. We've got the lemons build and the hooptiest. I need Jay. Yeah, close your eyes. Tell me when to stop. Stop. All right, that's the lemons build. You will be choosing the lemons build. I will choose the hooptiest. Let's right. get into it. Here we go. <laughs> well, oh, man. <laughs> uh, I can't even see. I need my glasses. Ah, oh, this is well, a Sajeev Mobile of the yeah. first order. Yeah, it is a Sajeev Mobile of the first order. If uh, those of you don't know, Sajeev is one of our judges. He is a Ford enthusiast. And I got to say, kind of a malaise to 80s yeah. era Ford enthusiast. Yeah. This yeah. appears yeah. to be some kind of a Lincoln with an upper window. Uh, it's a Mark <laughs> something from the early yeah. 70s, I guess. What does yeah. that make it a four? I don't know. I don't Who know. Who knows? Ain't yeah. nobody knows that. Do you think it was a demo derby car? Because it, it's it got chains on the trunk. Yeah. And it clearly has, you know, a sponsorship from a foot auto service. Yeah, that, I think that the chains holding things closed is a very demo derby-ish thing. Yeah. Although this actually brings up a good point. We get a fair amount of questions uh, via email of, what are the kinds of cars that we allow to race in lemons if it had come from a previous series? And we don't have any specific, you know, you can't run this if it came from that series. We don't have that. All we care about is whether it passes our own safety tech. One thing that we have seen is that cars from Circle Track mm, almost never don't do yeah. as well in our safety inspection. And yeah. I think one of the reasons for that is there's a fair amount of crossover between circle track safety and demo derby safety. So uh, <laughs> well, a little, a little I, bit different. Yeah. And I would say circle tracks, if you think about it, they crash way more than we do. Right. Yeah. I mean, a couple orders of magnitude more clang, clang, cars rolling, cars catching on fire, dudes, helmets flying out the window, which we have seen at the circle track. <laughs> yeah. And yet, their safety spec, we literally have seen circle track cars coming like, I've been running this thing for 10 years at the dirt track down there. And it's like rusty, the pipes that you hold your mailbox into the ground with, and that's it. I, how are these people not all dead? I think it's the same uh, phenomenon, uh, you know, in a street crash. If you're drunk, you're less likely to be injured. <laughs> yeah. On that note, let's yeah. move on. Uh Oh, oh man! Better, actually, yeah. So uh, this uh, we forgot to mention the first time. This is from C Flow Moto. This is uh, one yeah. of our regular racers from Black Iron Racing, and uh, we we saw a couple of these images. He took a trip to apparently the greatest uh, malaise American car junkyard in Southern California because uh, there was a whole collection of these that he sent to us. Uh, this appears to be some kind of Big Lebowski uh, yeah. era. LTD it's a, or something. It's an LTD, right? Yeah, that was my guess. Yeah. I just, you know, I forgot to mention in that previous photo, hey, it, on this show, are we allowed to go back? Oh, sure. Once, anyway. Note, note the giant truck bumper. Oh, yeah. Look That's at that. Pretty good. That's that pretty is, good. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Although... Yeah, I don't know how you tell an LTD from a Mercury. I mean, again, that's the sort of thing Sajeev cares about. Right, exactly. Well, and as we always say, and as you... Uh, fans of this channel have often done. If if we totally screw up an identification on the car, which is about fifty percent of the time, yeah. Yeah. Um, comment in the uh, post in the comments and tell us exactly what we got wrong. Yeah, uh, and we'll so, give you your money back. Yeah, right. Exactly. You get what you pay for. All yeah. right. Well, LTD. Very good. Moving on.
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we haven't le- we haven't left the junkyard yet. Uh yeah, it's a Packard. Oh man. You know, there was a Packard, actually a pair of Packards uh, on Lemon's car spotting a few weeks ago. And it not not to foreshadow, but uh, the, they did win the uh, Lemon's Build Award for that week because who doesn't oh, want to see about to win it again? Who doesn't want to see a Packard yeah. on a road yeah, racing course? That's really that's great. Well, and I should qualify this. I think it's a Packard, but <laughs> someone in the comments will certainly correct me if it's not. And then behind that is a uh, is a. Uh, 75 6 El Camino. El Camino, yeah. 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 I thought it was a Firebird at first because of the plastic nose, but then right. you can see the uh the short back window there. So, right. uh, yeah. All right. Well, Packard, moving on. All right. We are we are out of the junkyard clearly because this is a car that would never find itself <laughs> in a junkyard. Uh, oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> This, you know, of course, is the famous uh, K car. Um, the you know we we often say this for American cars that have good ideas and incredibly terrible execution, but the K car was ahead of its time in the sense that it was one platform that was a sports car, it was a luxury car, it was a minivan, and it greatly reduced the amount of. R&D money and different tooling that was required to make a wide range of different cars. And of course, that's what all car companies do now. Yeah. Well, funny you should mention this because I was just watching The Last Dance last night. I watched the first three episodes of The Last Dance. Uh And it struck me, and this is exactly what was going on with Chrysler in the K-Car. So like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, you know, they're playing one game. They're (laughs) playing basketball. And the object is in 48 minutes at exactly the 48 minute mark can you put the little thing in the little thing more than the other guy put the little thing in the little thing at exactly 48 minutes that's the game well the owners and the gm and it they the documentary sets up this conflict right the owners and the gm they're just playing a totally different game yeah they're playing this game like i got a billion dollars invested in this sports team five years from now i don't yeah. want it to be worth half a billion dollars right totally different game and they're not talking to each other. Same thing with a K car. We, <laughs> in our magazine business, we're driving these. Go, this is terrible. Like it doesn't drive well. It's a bad sports car. It's a bad station wagon. It's a bad luxury car. The game that Lee Iacocca was playing was, hey, I got this horrible car company that's about to go out of business. What the hell am I going to do so it doesn't go out of business this year? He was playing a different game. Yeah. Well. And uh, look what happened to Chrysler, and look what happened to the post-Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls. Yeah, well, ain't it the truth? Ain't it uh, the truth? And I think the moral is you can't really have two different people involved in the same thing playing two different games. Fair enough. Oh, Kaminari ZX? <laughs> oh, man, you know more than I, I was just going to say 280 ZX with the body kit. Oh, it, baby. If it's a Kaminari, then uh, bonus points for you on that one. Man, that's, that is some Radwood. That is outstanding right there yeah that's pretty good i i I mean who knows what what could possibly be the reason why it's on a trailer (laughs) exactly because you know all nissan products are totally well thought out yeah well it's probably such a nice example that he didn't want to drive it to the pebble beach concour so that's because you lose value yeah right what is worth so much more that's right oh baby that's good and you know you can see i think that's just spray paint over the rubber bumpers yeah that uh, you can tell the flaking is Uh beginning in the middle Uh there so yeah Yeah, that's really good that's really good that is not bad it looks like well no i I take that back i thought that there was some black and gold uh pinstriping happening Uh but it looks like that's just the uh the little door ding protector catching the light in a certain way yeah i can't i can't speak that you know what i remember about that car i remember when for the first however long it was the NACA duct in the hood meant yeah. turbo. It meant yeah. extra awesome. And yeah. then at some point, it's like, nah, they all get that. That was kind of <laughs> sort of heartbroken. Well, like, that's like, I, to know? I was thinking about that, uh, about dual exhaust. I saw a GTI with dual exhaust. And, uh, you know, the current, the Mazda 3's got dual exhaust. You yeah. know, a, a, a transverse mounted four cylinder engine patently does not need dual exhaust. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it used to be in the old days that if you got the straight six, you got the single exhaust. But if you got the V8, you got dual exhaust. But yeah. then everybody realized, car companies realized, well, if we make it look awesome, then nobody will care if it sucks. And uh, <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, honestly, I think 280ZXs are due for a comeback. Yeah. 
It could know? be. Yeah. I think they're right about to turn the corner here. Well, and, and compared to other cars of the era, they aren't bad, which, no, you know, isn't saying much. Which but is a very low bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of not low bars, hot <laughs> damn. <laughs> Man, how come we haven't had one of these? Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good question. You know, these are expensive. Yeah. They, they yeah. I, you know, I don't know what. Well, I do know what separates them from other cars of the era, like the Galaxy and such that are worth $2, yeah. uh, which is that they're super freaking cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we'd, we'd, uh, the, I, I would love to have one of these. We, we've mentioned this before on the channel that we have a 4,200 pound weight limit. We do grant waivers. We generally don't grant waivers if it's something like a four by four suburban, but if it's something like this, then we certainly hands would down. grant a waiver. Hands, so. hands down. I think the condition would be you cannot theme it as the death mobile from Animal House. Right. That would yeah. be the condition. Although the death mobile from the JFK parade would <laughs> totally too. But, That'd be good. Yeah. This uh, is from the Duke arrives. Um, I think he's our our friend out there in New York, and uh, I'm always amazed when a car like this appears in a place where there is also rust. Right, <laughs> right. It's you know, it's clearly been inside some old lady's garage yeah. for the last 35 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, looks good. Ah. Back to a regular contributor, Panama car spotting, Mr. Yeah. Jake down there in Panama. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of K yeah. cars, <laughs> well, uh, actually, the, the Neon was kind of the, was it the I think first? it was the successor, wasn't yeah, it? I, I was going to say, it, yeah. it kind of, it was the first car that brought us out of the K car era. I think that's right. I think that's right. I have to confess, I've never been underneath a Neon and I'm. <laughs> damn proud of it yeah but, yeah i don't think there was any crossover yeah yeah well and of course the plymouth voyager there right. in the uh, in the background there was plenty of crossover plenty of crossover um, and i my family place? had a first gen caravan when i was a kid and uh boy that that sure set them on a path of permanent japanese car ownership <laughs> from that point forward permanent car ownership <laughs> yeah and the irony was that their caravan had a mitsubishi 2.6 motor in it so it wasn't yeah. not a japanese car yeah. although it was a it was the chrysler of japanese cars which is to say a mitsubishi and it was terrible and uh, well yeah. And the biggest irony is that that was the best application of the K car platform. I mean, yeah. by far, that was the best that they thing that they ever did with it, and it was yeah. still kind of, kind of awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I would agree. And uh, yeah, my parents bought a Toyota Previa when I was about twelve years old that exists to yeah. this day. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, lesson learned. All right. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Someone's living the dream. That is a twofer. Wait a minute. So if I'm picking the lemons build, do I get to do the twofer? Does oh, yeah. No, yeah. The, uh, the the way that it works is it, it's a, a single post counts as a pick. So oh, however yeah. many cars are in that post. Oh, man. <laughs> That is something else. That's really great. You know, Spitfires, I guess the wheelbase is too small. I think we've been through that before with tech, and the wheelbase doesn't need our wheelbase minimum, which is a good thing because they're terrifying cars. Yeah, they're, you know, the, the, the Spitfire. We've had at least one or two, though, already. Yeah, we have. And and the and the wheelbase minimum, which is 82 inches for those wondering, um, that wasn't that's not something that we've always had. We realized, yeah. much like many other safety rules in the 24 hours of lemons, we realized after the fact, like, you know, that's yeah. a terrible yeah. idea to allow that to race because someone's yeah, going to die. It's a spitfire that reminded us of that. Yeah, yeah, um, it very well could be. Uh, yeah. Uh, man. <laughs> but that's another, you know, that's another car that's probably due for a for a revival. I mean, it's a great looking car. Yeah. And Really, at the end of the day, I mean, it's terrible. Is it any worse than an MGB or a Big Healy or uh, any of those? Cars? Probably not. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't know. Well, a good friend of Lemons and uh, Lemons Racer, Ford Capri Lemons Racer, no less, uh, our friend David is currently building a GT6, which is the fastback coupe version of the Spitfire with a Rover V8, uh, which is going to be so super awesome. And um, I'm sure he'll let us know in what ways um, it has some drawbacks. Yeah, because whatever the problem with the Spitfire is, certainly doubling the cylinder count. <laughs> yeah. Going to just fix it right up. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was from D Lang's Hoopties, um, <laughs> appropriately named um, Lemon's account. Uh, thanks for that submission. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, look wow. who it is. Baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, uh, we were down in Palm Springs. And, uh, you know, these are just thick on the ground. You have to get out of Palm Springs and go down into, like, desert hot springs and shit. Yeah. And then these are absolutely, absolutely everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I drove these when they were new. And, God, you would get in them and you'd think, okay, this is going to be it. Detroit is back. I got, <laughs> I got a big, sophisticated 4K motor, man. This is going to be awesome. And then they're just unbelievably awful. <laughs> I worked at a BMW shop briefly and uh, uh, we had a customer come in and says, Hey, do you guys do tops? Like what? what, what? And, and this guy, he was from the South. He was like from Georgia or somewhere. And uh, like, what do you like, like top, top ends or, 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 or paint or what? Do you, no, no, no tops. And what he meant was vinyl tops, which <laughs> apparently is like a whole industry in Atlanta or wherever he was from. Like, you know, you could go into any old repair shop and like, yeah, most of them will do a top for you for your DeVille. <laughs> so um, yeah, this one, uh, this is this one is particularly interesting. I mean, uh, uh, nobody's going to know this. AG Four Square is my wife. Yeah. Um, this one is particularly interesting because, yeah, that's clearly an aftermarket job. Yeah, and the paint is pretty good on that car. And yet, look at the top. So, what did they <laughs> what did they make it out of? Like newspaper? I don't know. Be? It's clearly a moisture absorbing material. Yeah. 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 All right. Final car for this week. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> Back to so uh, to continue the story of my parents' minivan. Uh, they were, you know, configuration-wise, there was nothing wrong with the first-gen caravan. And uh, when it broke, semi immediately, <laughs> the second gen, which this is, um, was equally in the running as the Toyota Previa. In fact, because this one was more conventional and the Previa is all weird and swoopy and has a weird dashboard, they were a little bit hesitant to make that leap. And they uh, they seriously looked at the caravan and almost made the same mistake twice. Well, so so you know. it was just you and your sister. Why did your parents need a minivan at all? Well, uh, you know, you, you have to think of, uh, of, a, of a person my age, you know, there was no such thing as the Honda CRV back then. So, yeah, um, true, yeah. you know, it was either a gigantic, uh, LTD based wagon yeah. or a minivan. Um, you know, so th there just weren't, uh, weren't that many choices. There weren't a lot of options. There weren't a lot of options. I also want to point out, this is again from Panama Car Spotting, our friend Jake down there in Panama. This thing has a Boston Red Sox yeah. <laughs> from license plate, <laughs> which, uh, you know, Latin American countries, they're uh, they're big baseball fans. Although why they'd be a fan of the Red Sox, I don't know. Well, it's probably some uh, expats, you know. Yeah. They, yeah. Got, they got driven out of Roxbury and they had to <laughs> move to Panama. So, right. Yeah. And I guarantee right. you, they did not drive that van from Roxbury to Panama. No, they, way. they certainly did not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it right, so are we picking? Yeah, we're picking. Uh, the hoopiest goes first because, uh, as we always say, the lemons build is way yeah. more important because that's what we want to see in a lemons race. So uh, yeah. I've got the hoopiest. I'm going first, and there's really just no way that you're not going to go for. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, Spitfire well, and the Yugo. I mean, it's it's a it's a car from a country that doesn't exist anymore, and it's a car from a company that doesn't exist anymore, and it's another car from a country that does exist, but a company that sort of does yeah. exist and sort of doesn't exist. It's got all of the things that uh, make up for an extreme hoopty. So uh, that's the hooptiest for this week. Yeah, I, I I can't argue with that at all. And I just before we leave it, I want to point out. The slot mags on the Spitfire is yeah. like the guarantee of yeah. this is a particularly bad Spitfire. You know right. that it's been trashed by some heavy metal high school kid, but right. it's got slot mags on it. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. Yeah. Real, yeah, real red flag. That's the, is a red flag. the official wheel of Chad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly right. Who bought Chad, this car specifically to do burnouts in the Circle yeah. K parking lot. Ch Chad and the Toke High School parking lot in Lodi, <laughs> California. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. Uh, 
And then I, you know, I think Levinsville, I got to go with the Lincoln. All right. Yeah. There's really, yeah, I mean, look at that. There. Well, at that there. let me just say, uh, I, 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 know, I knew that this was the Lincoln that you were talking about, but yeah. to be fair, there was yeah. another Lincoln. Well, yeah, no. That. <laughs> there was this Lincoln. I think we've already covered uh, the reasons why we actually don't want to see that particular Lincoln in Lemon. You know, I'd say that's a good second, but yeah. no, I think the, uh, although the Caminari Z is pretty good too, but no, I'm, <laughs> I'm sticking with this. Only because I'd love to see it and I really wouldn't want to drive it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's the kind of car that would uh, upset people on the uh, Why You right. Ruin Classic spectrum, which is right. always uh, pretty entertaining. Right, we always like to see that. So, all right, so anybody, if you got money burning a hole in your pocket, that's your lemons build right there. Go out and find one of those, enter it. Guarantee you will wait. It can weigh 88,000 pounds and we'll waive the limit. Yep, indeed. Well, that does it for this week. Again, keep submitting. Go onto Instagram, tag your photos with Lemons Car Spotting. We will find it and uh, we will review it on this program. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Oh, baby. You know, we have that ban against gullwing doors, but we certainly don't have a ban against suicide doors. And there's no reason they're called suicide doors. That's just a term of speech. Indeed.